this much about you. You are able to draw. You are able to create art. Even if you've never done it before. The simple fact that you might have expressed a feeling, oh, you're so lucky you can draw, or I wish I could draw. Then that means that you can. That means there's something in you trying to come out. You just need to let it. So let's start. Here's a very powerful, simple exercise that shows you that with simple doodles, you can draw. You can create beautiful paintings and drawings and designs that will turn into something more complete in the future if you deem it valuable enough. These are all drawings that I've made tonight in a previous take. as complex or more complex than this could be simpler depends on what you want to do so let's go I'll show you several several approaches to this for the curious I have a fireplace or in this case a campfire sound file in the background you can find it by searching virtual fireplace on YouTube I hope it's an since you can't really hear it very clearly, it's just background. I hope it's okay. We'll just we'll see. All right. So using a very simple brush, I can use a black or I can use a brown. It doesn't really matter. I like to use a, a subtle brown. You'll see why in a moment. So I do a loose doodle. I might want to zoom in a little. shoulder as much as possible. I lock my wrist because the shoulder is a natural compass, a natu natural or universal ball joint and you can create much more graceful lines, more straight lines, more curved lines. character in there so I'll go with a darker line or 
years, I've just got to be cool enough that you like them. And don't be afraid to add lines. It's very liberating. How about adding a tail? Like, there's a tail. Make it fatter a little bit. And finish it in a bar, perhaps. What's this? Could it be a flying monkey? Or could it be an elf in a flying monkey suit? something that you wasn't weren't exactly planning to do. It liberates you, it gives you more possibility. And that's a lot of fun. And what a relief. So we have this character in record time. It's just a start of course. A very basic approach. Which could be developed into something a lot better. the orientation on the page. So, let's get back to central list. I see. This is now standard, so I'll just move it here. He's got a almost a gargoyle pose. You know, those stone sculptures on cathedrals, for example appear elsewhere, but this guy can now be inked. I can go back with a darker color and maybe black in this case. Same pencil, of course. And now that I know where most of things are, I can now loosely reinterpret these lines without, no, that was a disaster, without being a prisoner of them they go. Now, if this was a professional job, I would really zoom in and take the time to do each line much more precisely. But this is just a quick sketch. No expectations. Except to have fun and learn something and perhaps come up with some interesting characters that can be developed in the future if you need to. If you want to. Might as well just see what happens. That whole attitude of discovery stops doubt, stops fear, and then you end up with better results, faster results. You become a better artist, and as a bonus, you become a better observer. Drawing is a way to look at the world, and it's the specific components in a more way. And by drawing, in this case, I mean drawing from observation. Right now I'm observing a doodle, but one of the most powerful ways of drawing is drawing what you see from life. So if you can get to, um, to a public place and start sketching people, this is a powerful tool as well. I admit that I haven't done much of that, but I intend to is very very cool and uh, at first you might suck like I will I will suck at that at first and I'm aware of it because I don't draw fast when I try to do something specific but speed comes with experience speed comes with doing it so do it <laughs> it's that simple so that's one example that's not very good but it's a start I might keep this guy, so let's just merge it and maybe make it smaller. I like to keep them on the page to see my progress in one session. This is one approach. You don't have to do a full character. It could have been just a simple face. It could have been a landscape, a symbol, or an object. Here's another approach to draw something very 
very simple. In cartooning, drawing has been brought into a system of precision that is wonderful, especially for beginners, but professionals should use them more. I'll draw a table lamp. How about an oval? Let's put a thimble shape on top of it. That becomes the base of my table. Some kind of tree or extension here for the socket for the light bulb to, to happen. And then, of course, the socket itself. And these are all simple geometric shapes. Then I would have a light bulb coming out. It could be different kinds of light bulbs. This is a bit small, this is a bit higher. That's better. Now, what's a light bulb shape like? There are several different types, but be sure that a balloon like this circle plus a little extension is pretty standard. If you want to do a more standard light bulb, make it a little bit less fat. And you have a filament on the inside. This is a quick way of drawing it. Of course, that's a lamp. Without the lampshade. What's a lampshade? Well, usually, you know, one of the standard ways of having a lampshade is to have these wire hooks here are connected somehow to the lampshade by a circle on top. And that whole structure has extensions that, you know, all made of metal, of course. And they, they link up to the side of the lampshade and maybe in the middle or some kind of section. And then, of course, we don't see that once the lampshade is on. But I just wanted to explain that I'm thinking about what I'm drawing and that logic will carry me forward until I have something that looks really good. So let me erase a few lines. If it will allow me. There you go. Because I don't need them anyways. And I can draw the top of the lampshade. And then the sides of the lampshade. And like this. And guess what? I have a very basic lampshade. I mean, table lamp. Of course, in that case, I would eliminate what cannot be seen. observing my mother's stable lamp. And it had patterns on it, kind of like this. So, and it had, of course, shading. This is a great exercise. You, you want to draw objects around you, study how they're made, what kinds of angles they have, what kinds of basic geometric shapes they have. It doesn't matter in this case it exactly what you're looking at because that's an, an exercise in understanding how to construct from basic geometric shapes another of course another exercise that's very vital if you want to become better at drawing from observation is to do a lot of drawing from observation as i'm talking to you it's, it's very difficult for me to draw from observation it's a different kind of thing right. I need to shut the heck up <laughs> and do it. I need to get into the zone and do it. But I can show you an example of when I am in the zone. I drew this on paper. And I cleaned it up a little bit by using levels in Photoshop. And I signed it digitally. But this is all graphite pencil called them lead pencils but there's no lead in them this is graphite pencil drawn from observation i have this plastic skull at home and i placed it in front of a mirror so you can see another angle behind it i put it on top of boxes and such covered with fabric so that's why you see these complex shapes and i did all this at first line work of course very loose lines then i got back with darker lines darker shading on the side with a pencil and I ended up with this so you can draw from observation just by doing it more the more you do it the better you get the secret to this of course is to stop asking questions except for things like what angle is this or how big is this compared to that but if you start saying 
how are the eyes in relation to the nose that becomes a mental block it distracts you so instead of asking or naming the parts start seeing them as lines as shadows as areas but do not name them your brain wants to find shortcuts and that creates a problem when you try to draw them a chair has four legs your brain knows this and that in turn blocks you because in that scene that you're looking at you might only see three of the four legs but your brain will want to draw four of them and therefore you will so drawing from geometric shapes drawing from observation you would have to turn your eye into let me try one but i can't guarantee much i have a prototype rag doll on my shelf that i made for a customer years ago so i should stop talking but i'll try to talk anyways you try to turn your eye into a, a drawing machine or you train your your eye to go slower and you train your hand to follow the movements of what your eye sees as if you were a tracing machine and if you do it right if you don't ask questions you just draw it if you follow the same rhythm that your eye is showing then you'll become a drawing machine you'll be able to quickly summarize what you're looking at without having to get lost in the details I'm keeping these lines very light and very loose because I might have to modify some of them. For example, this one, this piece here. Don't be afraid to go inside the shape if there's any detailing that you saw as you were observing. But if I do it right, you'll start to see something that looks like it's been traced. up this line but I'll still go with it. I read it in a book once. The book was called High Focus Drawing and I can't quote because it's been over 10 years but the artist was saying something of the sort of what I just said. You slow down your eye, you speed up your hand until they meet and they become synchronized then there's nothing you can't draw. There's a shadow on my table where it's lying because it's actually you can't see this tip. It's actually truncated by the shelf upon which it's sitting. And that line has been contradicted by what I'm drawing right now. So that means this hand, this arm is too short compared to reality. You still get a picture, you still get an idea of what this looks like. And you'll see it even better in a moment when I shade it a little bit. But the more you do this, of course, the better you get at it. I'm okay, but I'm not fantastic at this. Since I don't have any expectations, right now but if I were to do this in the hopes of doing something cool or something that might impress someone as an exercise it would fail because I wouldn't be able to do it as much as even now as I'm talking but again if I wasn't talking I would get an even better result you will get some distortions as you do this but better these distortions and the major ones that happen when you're just guessing. So my advice to you is start drawing from observation. You don't need to go through several books to find out how to do it. Keep doing it. That's the secret. Stop asking questions like, what is it? Start, stop labeling it. Just do it. Draw what you see. That's the secret to much.
much better drawings. You draw what you see. You become a drawing machine. Some might be afraid of that. They think they're gonna lose their expressivity. On the contrary, you're building your skills. And that means you can express yourself better after the, after the fact. Another thing you can do is use a wider brush and create stains instead of lines and those stains might cross each other and become darker and you can see things in the stains you can scan the stain of coffee or a tea or ink and draw on top of that i've done that several times i love it you can take a photo of some interesting stain on the street for example you port that into your phone or your computer trace over that see some interesting divine designs like right now i'm seeing some kind of rough angel or maybe a dancing bird person i don't know i'm just improvising i shouldn't even be doing that right now i should be randomly creating a stain but i saw something right away so you can find really interesting designs in there i also like to play with opacity since i have this freedom Once again, everything I do now can be done in one way or another onto paper. So don't be afraid of doing that yourself. Like I'm looking at this right now and I can see faces, a lot of them, but not all of them are worthy of being developed. Developed. So um, my layer is transparent too much, so new layer and then you go on this and I'm a mask maker as well as a puppet maker, so sometimes I can see an interesting design in these quick sketches. And this guy seems to have some kind of jester hat with feathers. I don't know yet. You might notice that I'm having a bit of lag with my tablet right now. There's a whole lot of things going on with my system. same doodle I can find other things. That's, that can be a very interesting <laughs> challenge that you may have with friends. You can each start from the same doodle, send it to each other, or photocopy it or something. And you, without looking at each other's work, as you do it each on your own paper, you'll notice how similar or different your two doodles will be. That can be a whole lot of fun. So I have this little goblin guy. He's kind of fun. He's got stuff on his head too, but maybe they're more like branches. And yes, you can veer away from what you saw first for the sake of what you see now. Should I do this? Should I do this? 
progress really, really fast. Until some grown up or older kid tells them that they're no good at drawing, that they don't do it ever again. Some don't. And that is a sad thing. We should keep encouraging children, not lying to them to say that they're geniuses or anything. If it's not the case, but even if it were the case, design a character quickly I will start with a basic shape wow this is so slow Sometimes 
this, and this, and then they get narrower again. Kind of like Popeye arms. So I already have some kind of skeleton.
lines before. I know how I work and I just would get lost. But these lines, even though they're very rough, and I could clean them up. I could retrace this, of course. Make it look a lot better. And shade it, of course. And I could have a little character in a children's book or as a puppet show or something like that. So here you just saw how I design quite often some of my best characters. I, can, I do that mostly on paper, but recently I've been working more in digital because when I'm at home it's easier sometimes to have all these options at my disposal, especially the selection and resizing things. And of course the magical option of undoing things. So there you go. You see a process that you can apply to your work. That's always a pleasure. For me anyways, when I get that moment of, that's how they do it, oh my, I've been complicating things way too much, and I just wanted to share it with you, so, if you like this, let me know, and I might make more videos like this, I don't have that many comments on my videos so far, so, if you like something I've done, please tell me. If there's something you like less, I also want to know because I can't improve if I don't know there's something wrong. So I'm doing another doodle, maybe. You know what? No, I'm going to stop right now.
middle of your page and you draw just on one side of it and you'll see the reflection in the mirror. Of course, it's not as comfortable as doing this digitally, but it works. I've done it. I've also done it on a webcam. And you can play with several
so I'd like to keep it as a great bonus for me. I like it. I like when that freedom I'm imposing myself. And yes, that does sound like a contradiction, but that freedom I'm imposing myself is also giving. Don't worry.
yourself.